Welcome back to Jewish Q Legal Network podcast. I'm here with Steven Univer, a partner in Sinaiska and Univer, a firm that does a lot of commercial law, including real estate commercial law. Uh, Steven, welcome back. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Michael, for having me here. So I got to thank you because what we do here is we educate the people on different aspects of the law. And uh, it's always very good to spend some time, a few minutes of your, of your day, to watch these videos with Steven Univer. If you are investing into a property, you're buying, selling, I think you should familiar, familiarize yourself with the issues that are out there so you know how to do due diligence and you know what to ask the right questions of your attorney or your accountant uh, when uh, making a significant investment. Uh, and a question arose that uh, somebody asked, uh, which is pretty interesting. People know that generally you should not buy property under your, own, under your name. We just had a seminar recently with you, Stephen. You were kind enough to explain why it's a bad idea to buy a property under your own personal name. And we're talking about a commercial property because of the liability, tax issues, right? Uh, the question is this though. Every time you open a company, you got to pay fees to the state, city. You have to ha pay to report income tax, do separate returns. It gets a little costly and cumbersome. Should you open a new LLC or a new company every time you embark on a new venture, every time you invest money into a new project or just have one big company and buy everything under that company? So, so that's a very great question. I get it all the time. Can I just buy this? Can I just invest with my own personal name? And I, it's always a conversation with the client. What are your needs? A conversation with their accountant. What's the best tax version? But I would say across the board, I have never recommended ever anybody investing into, forget about real estate as well, but into mm -hmm. a business in their own name. Always okay. in a company because you, when you invest in your own name, you open up not only yourself to liability, but everything that you own, everything that you potentially will own sure. under your own personal name. Right. And what about, uh, should you have one company for all your investments or open a separate company for each investment? So that's a very specific question. And I think it depends on each investment. Okay. Uh, generally, I would say each investment should have their own company with one company owning owning that company. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also depends which state you have investors from. In okay. New York, there's certain forms of ownership that are illegal. An S corp is not allowed to be owned by an LLC. So mm -hmm. that's always a question. And that's why you should always speak to somebody who understands tax law and works with accountants. Absolutely. Understand that. Because if you open up an S corp thinking you're going to be owned by another LLC that you own, you'll file a tax return. You'll get it immediately audited. Mm -hmm. so okay. That's very, very interesting. Yeah. Specific, yeah. very dangerous questions, which you don't want to be audited by the IRS. A hundred percent. Uh, that's a great point, um, Stephen. But what happens uh, if you have multiple properties on the one company, on the one LOC, and something happens at one of the properties? You don't pay the mortgage or you know, the project goes bust. You owe money to contractors. Somebody slips and falls even, and insurance does not cover. Construction accident insurance doesn't cover the whole thing. Uh, would you say it's a bit dangerous to own a bunch of properties under one LOC that could get sued? Well, just hearing that question gives me a little anxiety. <laughs> uh, so, and I'll tell you, recently I had a client who owned 10 properties under one entity. Uh, and he paid insurance on every single one of the properties except for one. Wow. Somebody fell in front of last year during a snowstorm. Oh, my God. Unfortunately, uh, the judgment was quite a bit and he had to take out a mortgage to pay off the amount. Wow. But if the judgment was a lot more and the property wouldn't have covered it, all of the other properties would have been at risk. Mm -hmm. So that's why I recommend no matter what you're purchasing, aside from 100% getting insurance, right. uh, making sure that you put it into their own property. That way, if there's any ever any kind of liability, everything is unknown. Uh, you don't know what you don't know. 
So mm -hmm. if something happens, at least every single other property, your personal finances won't be affected. Thank you. That's a great answer and a great advice to follow. And of course, today we're giving only educational general advice. We're making you aware of the issues and concerns that are out there. But if you are embarking on a venture, you're investing money, and uh, no matter how small, you have to be protected. You have to go to an attorney, seek professional advice. This is what these types of professionals do. They advise you. They watch out for you. They think of worst case scenarios. So you are prepared. Uh, you know what are the risks going in. If you want a full consultation, you have to contact uh, Steven Univer at the number we're going to give at the bottom of the screen. Steven, again, thank you so much for your time. And we're going to have you back with more great questions and great answers. Thank you, Michael. I always enjoy it.